what according to you is work and everybody is scared hearing the word work i have to go for a work i have to find out a job i have to do this work i do that work as if somebody is pushing them the moment uh, you think somebody is pushing you you must understand there is a constipation in your mind constipation of body leads to constipation of the mind you because you were not conscious of what food to go inside you have not been conscious to make sure that you have to pedicure manicure your body and when that happens work creates fear and the fear leads to uneasiness in your easiness your easiness gets dislocated in the dislocation they use the term dis ease easiness dislocated dis ease and slavery is dying you have a regular system and the regular system is called your samskriti your culture and that culture tells you early morning what to do what not to do if you practice that much then there is no work then you understand no work no food this is the 38 story from the zen stories of zen flesh zen bones written by paul rips gisho's work gisho was ordained as a nun when she was 10 years old she received training just as the little boys did when she reached the age of 16 she traveled from one zen master to another studying with them all she remained 3 years with unzen 6 years with guke but was unable to obtain a clear vision at last she went to the master inzen inzen showed her no distinction at all on account of her sex he scolded her like a thunderstorm he coughed her to awaken her in her nature Gisho remained with Inzen 13 years and then she found that which she was seeking in her honor Inzen wrote a poem this nun studied 13 years under my guidance in the morning she was wrapped up in other in the evening she considered the deepest cones in the morning she was wrapped in other cones the chinese nun tetsuma surpassed all before her and since Mujaku none has been so genuine as this Gisho yet there are many more gates for her to pass through she should receive still more blows from my iron fist our Gisho was enlightened she went to the province of Banshu started her own zen temple and taught 200 other nuns until she passed away one year in the month of august yes <laughs> teaching 200 nuns this yes. and everybody will be thinking what is that they were teaching first for the physical body that the moment you get up in the morning you drink that one bottle of water room temperature water which is left next to you you chew and drink the water then you brush your teeth and then you take your finger to press your gums for 15 seconds every part so that the gums become strong smell mouth smell will not be there it doesn't mouth doesn't stink and then you rinse your mouth 18 times you do your nostril blow out 30 times you do your stomach pumpings 200 times you do your anuloma viloma 3 times to control your breath and then you do your warming up exercise loosening up all parts of your joints and stretching stretching you if there is sun rising up you looking at the sun to do your surya namaskar or you rush up to teach the people who are waiting outside early morning you finish us and then you go to the move to the field to touch the mother earth to feel the sky and the wind the sunlight the earth and the wind is very very important you make sure that the path to the pond is always clean pedicured so that 
Anytime Aditi Devo Bhava, anytime the rainwater can come, it can fill up the pond and to the other areas where rainwater harvesting has been done. You make sure that all your panels have been cleaned so that solar sunlight is being taken as a holy water. It cleanses it beautifully. And then you make sure that you practice Mahanavruddha silence. One hour, one day in a week. You fast once a week. So then the body gets the power to rejuvenate and push things forward. You meditate, you sit in silence. One is silence of not talking, Mauna Vridha, not talking. The other one is in closed eyes, you sit in silence. This is what Gisha was teaching for 200 nuns. And that is enough because when every one nun, you get a thousand man warrior and that nun will be teaching a thousand beautifully. What is beautiful? Nothing, just the base to connect to the foundation. Gisha was ordained as a nun when she was 10 years old. She received training just as the little boys did. Yes. When you are young, like boys and girls, no different decision. When she reached the age of 60, she traveled from one Zen master to another, studying with them all. She remained three years with Hunsen, six years with Guke, but was unable to obtain clear vision. At last, she went to the master in Zen. In Zen showed her no distinction at all on account of her sex. She went to one master to another because everywhere when he, she went, the masters must understand when you start discriminating between girl and the boy, then you will discriminate in the caste, the religion, the color. What happened to Gisho was, the masters whom she went, there was differentiation. She has been given, because she was female, a little bit of love and affection. No, no, no. When she went to Master Insan, he showed no distinction at all. So in that, 13 years, she became enlightened because the toughest of the training is needed to remove the last drop of your talent from your body. It should be distilled water, not mineral water. You don't need minerals in your body. You need distilled water. And when that happened, she went and started her own monastery. And then she trained 200 nuns. The distinction is very, very, very important. When you train, when you go to a master, that master, what is that? He scolded her like a thunderstorm. Yes, that if you should be able to accept that one. If you really wanted to cleanse, if you really want to become a disciple, if you really want to become a student under a master, so that you become a master too. If you want to roll like a thousand man warrior and you have, have the power of thousand man warrior which is clogged by the borrowed knowledge, you have to go to a master, the master can scream at you like a thunderstorm, yes. He cuffed her to awaken her inner nature, squeezed her out to the last drop till she falls down, not one time but seven times, no work, no food, no Sweat, no eat at all, not the sweat, the sweat which soaks your t-shirt, your dress. Comfort to awake, you know, that is the time when the external things are squeezed out, your clothes will dry very fast for you to iron it up. You should remain in 13 years, then she found that which she was seeking. That's the time she found out, yes, total squeezing out. I become slim. No external fat, I had only skeletal muscle. When you have skeletal muscle, yes, you will find everything in your body working beautifully. That skeletal muscle, please understand, it doesn't come from your yoga class, it doesn't come from your karate class, it doesn't come from your gymnasiums. That skeletal muscle will be your samskriti, your culture which you practice in your house. In your land, you must go to your land, please try to understand. And in the land, you climb the tree, jump into the water, you dig the, 
the mud the mud yes the mud sucks all your poisons the rainwater is ozone water in the pond so beautiful yes the rivers the lakes climbing the tree yes you don't have to go to any gym you see every tree you hug it becomes tree therapy and then you can see enough of fruits organic fruits and vegetables you see all the pet animals you don't even tie them up lock them up they're just moving around like what you see in Rakumji Ashram. All the things are running around. The rabbits are running around. The geese, the ducks, the um, turkeys, the guinea fowls, the emus, <laughs> the cats, just the cows. Nobody is tight and you can see them so much to love. You go near to them. They come running to you as if they want to hug and kiss you. That was the power which you really get it. That is the skeletal muscle. <laughs> That's the way Geshe understood and she trained her nuns. And if you have trained that kind of 200 nuns, see, it has been written again and again. The country benefited and it became one of the richest countries. One joke. There were three nuns. They all told the priest that they were going to do one sin each. So the priest says, okay, do your sins, come back and I'll bless you. So they went to do their sins and came back to get blessed. The priest asked the first one who was laughing what her sin was. She said, I had sex with a guy. The priest said, okay, blessed her and said, go drink some holy water. So she did. The next one was laughing louder and the priest asked her what her sin was. She said, I got in a fight with another nun. So he says, okay, blessed her and told her to go drink some holy water. So she did. The priest asked the last one who was laughing even harder what she did. And she was laughing. And as she was laughing, she said, I pissed in the holy water. <laughs>